Right, after what feels like an eternity of filming and editing these videos, the day has finally come to get the Eaton MP45 supercharger installed into the engine bay of the MX-5. I hope you're looking forward to this one as much as I am. Let's do it. So in order to get the supercharger mounted into the engine bay of the MX-5, I'm going to be using two parts out of the G19 supercharger kit. Now if you remember a few episodes ago, I got the G19 inlet and outlet bolted up to the supercharger, so that side of things is taken care of. So that leaves us with these two brackets. We've got the supercharger mount bracket, so this thing is going to bolt to the side of the engine and the supercharger is going to hang off that. And then we've got the belt tensioner, which job is to get a drive belt from the crankshaft of the engine to to the supercharger because it's not going to be much good without one and it needs to incorporate the power steering pump at the same time so the plan for today is going to be get those two brackets installed into the engine bay bolted down tight and then we can move on to the part that I'm really looking forward to which is getting the supercharger installed Right, so the first bracket I want to install today is the belt tensioner and in order to do that I need to remove the current belt tensioning assembly from the power steering pump. So first order of the day is going to be detension the power steering belt and get that thing off. So in order to do that, first up, I need to slacken the power steering pump pivot bolt. Now it's a long 14 millimeter bolt. Access to the nut is quite easy with the spanner at the back here, but the head of the bolt is a little bit more difficult because it's hidden behind the power steering pump pulley. So I've got my 21 mil socket on the crank pulley bolt and I'm just going to turn the engine over until I can access the head of that bolt through one of the cutouts in the power steering pump pulley. Right, I've got access to the head of that bolt now, so I'm just gonna slacken off that bolt. Right now we know that the power steering pump will pivot uh, to remove the belt. I just need to slacken this 12 millimeter lock nut here and then slacken this 14 millimeter bolt here and then use the 12 millimeter adjustment bolt to take the tension off the belt and then we can get it out of the engine bay. Okay, so now we've loosened the belt tensioner, I can push the power steering pump downwards to get the belt off. She's out of there. Okay, now that the belt's removed, I can focus on getting this belt tensioner assembly removed. And looking at it, I think I need to remove this 40 millimeter bolt here that we've already slackened. And then there's another two 14 millimeter bolts connecting the bracket to the power steering pump itself and again to access those I need to rotate the power steering pump pulley which thankfully is a lot easier now that the belt's removed but actually before I do any of that the first thing I need to remove is this clamp here which is secured to one of the power steering pump lines so I'm going to knock that little lock tab over there and then remove these two fasteners here there's a bolt and a nut and then we should get that clamp removed. Okay, now that clamp's removed, I can rotate the power steering pump pulley to access the two 40mm bolts behind it and get those out. It's one. Two. Right, I've left the most accessible bolt till last, this 40mm bolt here, so once I've got that out, this whole tensioner assembly should be out of here. There we go. Right, so with all that removed, that power steering pump is just loosely flopping around in there, but don't worry about that because that's gonna be secured back into place when we get the G19 belt tensioner installed. So, here it is. So we need to work out which fasteners this is actually gonna use because this kit, currently anyway, doesn't come with any instructions. Thanks, Doug. He said, uh, he said, 
he is going to include some instructions soon, but for now, we're flying solo. So, looking at it, I think what it's going to use here, it's going to use the uh, power steering pump pivot bolt. So I'm going to need to remove that fully. And then I think it's going to use that 14 millimeter bolt that we already have removed here. And then it's going to use one of the fasteners that bolts directly into the power steering pump. So I think first thing I need to do is get that power steering pump pivot bolt out and then reinstall it through this G19 bracket. So that's the nut off the back. Now we just need to knock this bolt towards us to get it out. I thought we were going to have a big problem then, but because I've shoved the radiator closer to the engine, the head of the bolt was hitting the fan shroud before I could get it out. But thankfully there was enough flex in the plastic for me to be able to just force it a little bit and then get that bolt out. Right, so now we can get it reinstalled through the G19 bracket. Right, I've just got that bolt loosely installed for now and it's clear that I'm going to have to remove this little bracket here because it's fouling it. No big deal. Unclip this little connector here, 10 millimeter socket, we'll get that off. Right, I'm actually going to reinstall this bolt because that's one of the bolts that holds on this timing belt cover. So I've got the bracket off, I'm just going to put the bolt back in. Right, I've got that pivot bolt back in and loosely installed, so that's one of the fixings taken care of. Now, I've been looking through what's left of the fasteners supplied in the G19 kit, and there's two Allen bolts left, which I'm assuming I need to use right now, and one of them has a little spacer. So the one that bolts into the power steering pump itself, it needs a spacer between the bracket and the pump. Right, we've got those three fasteners in, so that is now in place. I'm not going to fully tighten these fasteners down just yet because I want to get the other bracket installed before I do that. In fact, speaking of which, let's move on to the supercharger bracket, which actually should be a little easier. Right, so the supercharger bracket bolts to the engine using three existing fasteners. There's two uh, exhaust manifold studs here, it uses those, and then it uses this 40mm lifting eye bolt here. So first up, I'm going to get these three fasteners removed. Right, I'm also going to remove this little breather hose here as well because this thing is going to get in the way of our install. Right, before I install the supercharger bracket I just need to slacken off the two uh, small Allen fixings hidden away inside the bracket and that will sort of disconnect the two halves of the bracket and then once it's all in place I can then nip those bolts back down. So, that's done, let's get the supercharger bracket installed. So I'm going to locate it on the two exhaust manifold studs, like that, then get this lifting eye bolt back in without the lifting eye, we don't need that anymore. Manifold nuts back on. Okay, major progress has happened now because we've got both of those brackets installed into the engine bay. Now I haven't fully tightened them down just yet because I wanted to make sure there's one uh, supercharger bolt that locates between both of these brackets and I wanted to make sure that those holes were aligned before doing the final tighten down. So they are aligned, I've just temporarily stuck a bolt in there now just to hold it in place while I tighten everything else down. So we've got three bolts down at the power steering pump side, we've got the power steering pump pivot bolt to tighten up, we've got the two Allen fasteners to tighten up and then on the supercharger bracket we've got the two exhaust manifold nuts to nip up the lifting eye bolt and then finally I need to reach inside the bracket with an Allen key and nip down those two small Allen bolts and then those brackets will be fully secured down in the engine bay and then you know what time it is supercharger time well, I'm sorry I've just realized that since I moved the camera my microphone hasn't been working so hopefully 
the bad sound quality hasn't distracted too much from what's going on here because we're about to get to the good bit. We've got the bracketry installed, it is absolutely rock solid, superb quality stuff from G19, so now we can get the supercharger in. Right, to get this thing installed, we're actually gonna use three of the existing mount points on the supercharger. The main one is this one back here, so I'm gonna get this thing offered up and get that bolt in first. And quickly, cause it's quite heavy. Right, I've got that first bolt in there, so this thing isn't going anywhere. So now I need to focus on the other two fasteners to get this thing installed. Now, the second one is up here at the front, and this is the one that I mentioned earlier. This locates between both supercharger brackets, and it actually consists of a bolt, a washer, and a spacer, which sits between the supercharger and the bracket. So I'm gonna get that all in place, get the nut on, and then get that loosely installed. Okay, this leaves us with one last bolt to get this supercharger installed, and that's this one right at the front here. So I've got the bolt, and there's a pretty hefty spacer with it as well that sits between the bracket and the supercharger. So I'm going to get that in there, get it started, and then tighten down these three supercharger bolts, and then that supercharger is officially installed. You know what? A monumental thing has happened today after months if not maybe a year of talking about it i finally have a supercharger installed into the engine bay of the mazda uh, i hope you're enjoying these images as much as i am because that really does look excellent in there in fact it almost looks like it belongs in the engine bay of the mazda so that is a big shot of motivation to get this project finished now because although this is a massive step in the right direction there is still quite a bit to do to get this project finished namely i need to get the intercooler in i need to get the pipe work for that sorted out there is a blower valve to install and there's a boost gauge to install as well so all that is coming up in future episodes if you want to stay up to date with this build please subscribe to the channel and if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up thank you i'll see you in the next episode but for now how good does that look <laughs>